Welcome to the Impact Lounge. You are in the number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. This is The Cool Factor, and I'm your host, TW. And of course, with me, we got the man with the plan, the owner, the operator of the Impact Lounge. BQ, say what's up to the people. Yeah, what's up, everyone? Uh, back in the place to be this week. I was out uh, out of pocket last week. I was actually at AEW, uh, I was called it, di- not Dynamite, but uh, Rampage, Rampage. So Rampage was local in St. Louis. So had to hit it up. And, uh, you know, I took my son. I wasn't going to do it, at the, but at the last minute, he's like, my son was like, yeah, I really want to go. So I was like, okay, let's do it. Because I had uh, my Air Force Reserve morning the next weekend. So I was like, Ugh, or the next morning. So I was like, uh, so I had to, I was dragging ass a little bit, but it was a lot of fun. And, you know, I took away a couple of things from this show okay. that, you know, in the, between matches, I haven't been to live wrestling in forever. So okay. between matches, they did a really good job. Wrestlers will come out and cut promos sometimes towards the crowd, sometimes whatever, but it was like, it wasn't necessarily on TV, but it was keeping the crowd engaged. You know, Tony Khan came out, you know, and it was just, you know, got got the people fired up. And I do remember going to a couple of Impact shows at the in Orlando, and Jeremy Borash was excellent about that as well, which obviously it wasn't live, but in between matches, he would get the people, he wouldn't let them fall asleep. You know, I know I know back right, right, right. <laughs> those Impact Zone days, oh, they weren't making any noise, but I mean, he did quite a bit to keep people engaged. Yeah. I don't believe, I, I, I don't know. I would assume David Penzer's not doing that, right? I can't Probably imagine not. him no. doing, you know what I mean? God, I what I was David told is they just play wheel in the night between <laughs> all the matches. That's <laughs> what, Why wouldn't they, right? I mean, um, <laughs> but they did a really excellent job. And it, it was funny was CM Punk came out at one point and he was talking and I was like, dude, this is the best promo I've ever heard. And then they're like, okay, we're, we're going live in three, two. I was like, oh my God, he was just talking oh. to other people. But he was, he was like, you know, the Cardinals suck. And everyone was booing him. He's like, oh, it's okay, it's okay. The Cubs suck too. So, hey. <laughs> but he uh, he was so natural. And, and he was joking because on, if you watch it on TV, it came from the commercial. And he was like running a, a circle around the ring. And he goes, yeah, ah, yeah. I was just doing that to make you guys think I was doing that for the last three minutes. You know, but it was <laughs> funny to like see him, uh, to see that live. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. But they did a really good job of just keeping people fired up and everything. Um, and while they were, you know, s- switching from AW Dark to to Rampage and everything, you know, just so I don't know, it just makes me wonder about the impact tapings because I remember Jeremy Borash being really good about it, and I just yeah. I get the feeling that doesn't happen this time around. But I don't yeah, know. I'm interested to go to an impact show when um, when the opportunity arises again. I mean, we'll see. I, you know, before COVID hit, they had a show planned. It was a pay per view that was planned for uh, a location in NYC. Um, and I was, you know, planning to go to that, but then, you know, the world stopped. So, you know, and I'm still like, you know, I'm still about going to public events and stuff like that. Like, I'm still like, eh, you know I mean? Funny that you mentioned it because I actually, <laughs> I called into the radio today and won two tickets to SmackDown. It's going to be in Hartford next week. That's <laughs> awesome. so, so I may or may not go. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. But, um, uh, if, if they're like box tickets, then I probably right. might- you know what I mean? I, I used to right in the middle of all the sweaty people. I mean, yeah. I used to always get the free military tickets because uh, WWE, you don't have to pay if you're military, but the seats they give you are horrible. Really? <laughs> it's like you, it's like your your head is turned like to the side. Oh, you're in the back oh. row, and you're like, <laughs> oh yeah, they put you like uh like next to like the Titan Tron, right? <laughs> yeah, dude, they're horrible seats, but I mean, I still I still appreciate it. It's whatever. Yeah. I, speaking of WWE, I'm probably gonna piss people off here by saying this i I didn't tell you this over text or anything i watched for the first time this week nxt 2.0 Ooh! i watched two episodes i put on my dvr you watched two episodes yes and i freaking loved it i was like oh my god dude um there was some bad comedy and stuff that i didn't really care for uh it's it's it it is what I have been wanting Impact to be. Now, granted, Impact doesn't have the budget and all that. That's not what I'm getting at at all. I mean, these 
the high definition that this show was in is like, wow. I mean, it's it blows AEW's stuff away, you know. Yeah. But real unique camera angles and just like mm-hmm. the overall presentation of the show and even the way they have the crowd set up, I'm just like, dude, I, that's how I envisioned, you know, Impact could do something with their crowd. Um, mm. and, and they kind of had that look in Orlando a little bit with the cage and all that, but I mean, the crowd is really lit up. It's a very intimate setting. You know, it's not, it's not a whole arena. You know what I mean? Like it's right, not, right, it's right. probably not that many more people than show up at an Impact show. Like there's more people, but it's not, it's probably yeah, it's the same. Like three, it's like, <sighs> I, I there might be three hundred people in there for that. Right. And that's what I know with the the or the impact zone in Orlando is usually about three hundred people there, two fifty to three hundred. So yeah. I was like, I'm pretty sure that's about the same number that we normally see. But the just the way they position everything pre- presented it, like there's a few wrestlers I didn't really care for or whatever. And and um I thought it was an easy watch, but at the same time it felt like two hours like it didn't like fly mm. by it was easy to watch but it, it didn't like fly on me you know like yeah, yeah. At one point i was like dude this show's still going on yeah um, <laughs> but i you know Mackenzie mitchell the, the backstage interviews i mean mm. she is a thousand times better than she was in impact but you know granted she was starting she's back training then. now though you know right I mean? right she's getting training like the the, the thing and I, I think i was saying this last week is like the thing that makes wwe so good as much as people you know hate vince mcmahon's tyranny uh, it's the fact that the buck stops with him, right? The buck stops with him. He's in charge and it has to be his way. And everybody knows that, you know what I mean? So he's not trying to hear about, you know, uh, whatever your issue is, like you better be in the shape that he likes. You better be in, you know what I mean? You better, you better wrestle the way he likes. You better cut promos the way he likes. Uh, otherwise there's no job for you. You know what I mean? There's no place. And as much as that's a real, you know, it sucks to work for a my way or the highway type of thing. It's a way to get a good damn product out. You know what I mean? It's a way to get a good product out. Like they're on point with their messaging. You know, everybody who works in there, like everybody is just on task, right? Like you yeah. talked about trying different camera angles and all this other type of stuff. It's because the people who work in production, they're like, oh, let me come up with something new. You know, they're looking, how can we create this next thing that's going to innovate Raw or yeah. innovate SmackDown? NXT is the testing ground for all of that, you know? And so, um, so yeah, I mean, listen, they have a, they have a high quality operation. You know, that's you got to give this man his credit. Yeah, that's what I felt like. It was, it was people who really stepping to the plate, like, how can this presentation be different? And that's what I'm saying I've always wanted out of Impact. Like, I'm not expecting that big budget show. But just the the use of the colors, I even noticed that when I was watching when I was at a rampage. Just the use of the colors that with the lighting and everything, it just it looked really good. And it's just, I I really felt like this particular ring setup and all that. I was like, dude, Impact could have done that. You know what I mean? And yeah. that's why I'm always talking about stuff kind of being cookie cutter and formulaic. You know, like I just want to see a little more of that. That being said, because we need to get into Impact in this episode. And before we talk about other stuff, Impact did introduce some new camera angles this episode. I was really happy about it. So uh, we'll, we'll get into that a little bit more when we start uh, reviewing the show. But I just want to throw it out there that I'm not like, oh, NXT is now the greatest thing I've ever seen. Like, I still enjoy Impact as a company a lot more. I'm not saying it's overtaken, you know. Um, but I'm happy to have another wrestling show I can watch now because NWA has become unwatchable. It's so bad, mm, mm. Um, which is disappointing because I used to love that stuff but yeah I, I think nxt is going through a, a very interesting transition now like i think that um i think that like uh you know the the golden era of nxt to me will always be the takeover era um that like i, I started watching nxt in like probably mid 2014 2015 um and i started watching it just from listening to uh solid monster sounds off he would always do these nxt reviews i've told you the story before And like, just from his reviews of like telling, you know, what was happening each week on the show, like I had some familiarity with the characters and the storylines. And then he just kept raving about these takeover matches. And he was raving about like the, the, the Charlotte and uh, Natalia takeover match. And um, then there was the big takeover match coming up with, um, with uh, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. It was a, 
it was Sami Zayn's big takeover match or whatever. With, and, with uh, yeah, um, Neville. And that was the same show that Kevin Owens debuted on. And bro, when I saw Kevin Owens for the first time, I was like, dog. That motherfucker's a killer. I love him, and I, he I, he busted his nose wide open in the yeah. first match, and he's like oh against my Juice God. Robinson. Yeah, I was like, yo, <laughs> I love this. I love this. Um, and then you know the whole thing happened. Sami Zayn won the title in the, the night, and then Kevin Owens turned on him, and the people were just like, oh, this is terrible. And uh, but yeah, I mean, like that that was, and at that time NXT was only an hour, and it was when the directive of nxt was to kill the indies in particular roh that was their that was their job you know what i mean and um you know uh, unfortunately you know they lost the ratings war to AEW, and this mcmahon has been taking it out on nxt has been taking it out on triple h via nxt ever since he has scrapped it which by the way i i want to say this like a little bit i I know guys this is the impact lounge we're going to get to impact uh, but if you guys watch Impact, you probably watch NXT. So, um, so this is probably not lost on you guys. Um, I think the thing about NXT that a lot of people were really mad about, but it's not wrong. The whole reason why they re- redid NXT to what it is now and got rid of the uh, WWE's version of ROH product is because it was not producing talent for the main roster. Like you could say what you want, but they let, you know, uh, Adam Cole and the, the undisputed era, like, you know, be the most dominant thing on NXT for like a year and some change or something like that. And those guys were never, never going to be stars on raw and SmackDown. Never, ever, ever, never. I'm sorry. Like, are you kidding me dog? Like picture, Adam Cole beating Randy Orton. Right, right. right. It was never going to happen. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it just, it just wasn't going to happen. And so, so NXT was investing all this time and energy and, you know, in production, time and energy equals money. Okay. So you were investing all this time, energy, and money into talent that could not fortify Raw and SmackDown. You know what I mean? And so, um, so yeah, I, I don't think Vince is wrong for what he did. And to be honest, the takeover era jumped the shark at some point. You know what I mean? Like at some point, you can only see so much of these, you know, never ending, you know, battles, you know, between five foot four guys that just, you know, like you got to do everything but fucking stab them to get a pinfall. <laughs> and, you know, and so, you know, I mean, it, it, it was enough. Enough was enough. So I said it. It's done. It's done. It's done. Whatever. All right. Back to uh, back to the lecture at hand. Um, <laughs> what 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 outside of the impact zone, if anything, caught your eye this week? Well, the episode we're gonna talk about the episode. It's a good episode. The viewership was down big time. I think like seventy eight thousand or something along the. Mm-hmm. I, I looked at the number before I went online, but I already brain dumped it. It was low. It was low, 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 and. Uh, the key demo was like 0.02, so you're talking about 25,000 viewers in the key demo, and I'm like, gosh, that's that's rough, you know. Um, people are always talking about, you know, Impact needs to be on a bigger network and this and this, but I mean, if you can't get those numbers somewhat respectable, at least in the key demographic, it's gonna, dude, Access TV is gonna be their home for a while. Like, I hate to, like, you know, burst people's bubble, but that's that's probably where it's going to be for a while. The number doesn't always bother me because I say it all the time. I don't watch it live. You know, I very rarely, I mean, I've maybe less than five times watched it as it airs uh, this calendar year. I just, I don't. I, when it was on Pop TV, I was like so in love with that product that I, I always watched it. There, but now I'm just kind of like, ah, let me watch whatever with my old lady and then I'll, I'll watch Impact after, you know? But every year that passes, people consume TV different. So you can't really trip on that number. But that key demo has to be, you got to have improvement there. I mean, it means you're basically making wrestling for for old people, you know, and that's, you know, it's not going to work. It's not going to work out for you. That's, you know, the key demo 
is the one that's going to make you the money. Uh, they're the ones that are going to spend the money on the merchandise. You know, they're the ones you have to talk to. And that's why it's always so, like, get RVD and all these guys off the screen and, and, and Dreamer and all, all these dudes because you're, you're trying to channel this, this uh, fan base that, that isn't really that important in, in mm. you know, the current landscape of wrestling. But what the hell do I know, right? Um, so it's a little disappointing it's down. I, I think the episode was good, but I don't think they promoted any matches that anyone gave a shit about. It's like, oh, Minoru Suzuki's going to wrestle. We just saw him wrestle John Moxley and these dudes, and, and you're like, oh, okay, we're, you know, we're feeding him Caleb with a K. Like, you know what I mean? Like, someone sees something like that, they're like, fuck, why do, do I want to watch that? You know? Right. You don't bring in a dude like that to, ha- to have him do squash matches. That's just my, my opinion. And uh, there was just stuff on this episode that I didn't... I, I said this a couple weeks ago. There was an episode a couple weeks ago. I had no clue what matches I was going to see because they didn't promote anything. Right. And with this one, maybe they promoted some of it, but for the most part, I didn't know what matches were on this show. You know, the, it surprised me when I turned it on. Yeah, I, you know, I, I totally agree with you. I, I mean, I think that um, the... Something that really, really, really st- stood out to me um, actually, I was thinking about it today because I saw, I saw an impact graphic for the matches they got coming up next week, and I was like, man, like, unless I check for it, I almost never see impact stuff come across my timeline. You know what I mean? Like, unless I'm like checking for it, or you know, like I follow different wrestlers that are in impact, um, and you know, sometimes they'll tweet something and uh, it's about them or whatever. But like, so for example. You know, I mentioned uh, Lights, Camera, Faction, uh, and Chris Bay is doing some fun stuff with them, and he's been, like, retweeting that type of stuff. So, you know, I've been seeing it, and I've been, like, sharing it, and in that way, I've been sharing some Impact-related stuff. But Impact has not done a great job of just promoting their own product. You know what I mean? Like, they, they the only time I see Impact stuff come across my my timeline is when you know they'll tweet out like the weekly here's what's coming up on impact this week but there's no type of like additional content to engage with and you know again like we talked about they had the match between like madison rain and uh and mickey james i'm like bro like you know this this story is here you know what i mean like you just, you know, instead of maybe instead of doing it next week, set it two weeks out and just spend a week just building and fluffing. And that could have been fun. Now, the match wasn't, you know, necessarily like, you know, some super duper main event type match, but it doesn't matter. Like wrestling is about the story. Wrestling is about the story. You could have put together a little package for, you know, Mickey James versus Madison Rain and, and whatever. And I just don't think they really go out of their way to promote almost anything they're really doing outside of like a couple of graphics you know what i mean and anybody who you know works at impact that's listening to this can get mad get mad get mad and promote your shit you know what i'm saying like so you know like because it it, this is not like we're not insulting impact we're just saying how the the you, you got Minoru suzuki coming out and you know you played his whole theme song and again by the way the only reason i know that's a thing is because on the Solid Monsters uh, podcast, he talked about how AEW brought out Suzuki and they didn't play his whole theme song. And they're like, oh, that's like the whole thing. It's his theme song. And I'm like, okay, I didn't know. I don't watch New Japan. I don't know. How would I know? Um, and so, you know, Impact brought him out and they played his whole theme song. And I'm like, okay. And I heard the crowd kind of somewhat into it. But it's like, dog, if you're going to make that a thing, make it a thing. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, go out of your way to produce it. Like, one thing about producing TV you can't just leave things up to chance. You know what I mean? Like you can't take the chance that a guest might say the thing you want them to say. Like, no, you got to go out of your way to bring out that thing that you want the guest to say. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, so like, like, like like Scotty Pippen, right? Scotty Pippen is wilding right now. He got a, a book out and he's out talking about how like, you know, Michael Jordan, did the last dance and, you know, just did it to make himself look better. And I'm like, if you're going to have Scottie Pippen on your show right now, you're not going to not ask him about Michael Jordan. Right, right. 
So, Scotty, anything on your mind? Glad you're here. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? Like, you don't just leave stuff up to chance like that. So, if you want the people to, you know, be rocking out to Suzuki's theme song, you got to find some way to prep them for that ahead of time. You know what I mean? You got to find some way to prep the audience at home uh, ahead of time. So, I don't know. I'm just saying. And, and, And by the way, I think it all goes together. It all goes together. So you talk about like the viewership getting low and I, I don't think the viewership getting low is necessarily that much of a bad thing because the, because now you can watch the show on Impact Plus uh, if you just wait till after it airs. You can watch it on YouTube uh, if you're willing to wait till 8.30. You know what I mean? Like they've made all these obscure ways to watch the show at your own convenience and right. people are taking them up on that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Thursday night, it, you know, there's football this back and, you know, it's on them. It's on impact to make this show something people have to go out of their go out of their way to see and something that people have to participate in when they're in the audience. Yeah, I think people just don't it's not on their their mind all week that the show's coming on, you know. Uh and and it's, as you said, tweeting out graphics and just posting graphic like that that's just regular promotion, you know what I mean? But I've always like talked bare about bare minimum promotion, right? Bare minimum promotion, and and that, that's why for years since I've been doing this damn channel, I've been talking about engaging content throughout the week. That's not wrestling. Like you can't always make it about what's going on in the ring, you know. So if they were able, if they were, I, I don't know what it would cost to produce whatever, but if they were able to do some kind of Mickey James Madison Reigns small video package, kind of like they did with before Hard to Kill for Rich Swan and Kenny Omega. Where, uh, which was fucking amazing, but of course it was uh, Mauro Ronaldo's idea, and he's the one that put it together, but he had like the five things Rich Swan needs to do to beat Kenny Omega, and the next day the five things Kenny Omega needs to do. Like, it was so good. Right. That kind of little shit, man, like that's, you know, you can get people pumped up throughout the week without saying, hey, here's the graphic, here's the graphic, and, and the graphics always look exactly the same, so I mean, you're not seeing any, it's just not popping out at you, you know what I mean? So, there's, there's little things you could do to just better promote the show. That's not traditional, you know, marketing, traditional promotion. Cause in this day and age, you cannot be traditional. That, that is one thing I know from all these books I've read and everything. You cannot just do the traditional stuff and expect, you know, extra nord, extraordinary results. It's just right. not going to happen. Right, right, right. And, and, and this is a little bit of a, of a tangent, but like th- just talking about like the social media space, the digital space in general, everyone's you know everyone's bandwidth is so saturated with all this content no matter what it is right like mm-hmm. if you like news right you're saturated with 10 different news products that all look the same all cover the same topics because that's the way it is and you know if it's like sports again like i oh god how many lakers beat writers do i follow like i get the same tweet about russell westbrook shot you know like <laughs> 10 times and, and yeah. so, you know, like, so like whatever it is, right. If you follow wrestling or whatever, right. Like there's so much of everything you have to find ways to stand out and create unique content. And that's, you know, again, that's the challenge of all creators in this mm-hmm. digital space, in this digital world. And so, yeah, it's just something that, you know, as a company impact, you know, they, they got to deliver for their fans better. Like, cause that's what this comes down to. It comes down to delivering for your fans. Like we're not, we're not critics. You know what I mean? Like we don't like sell a newsletter where people uh, pay to hear us critique impact wrestling. You know what I mean? Like we're, we're fans. People tune into this show to hear us, uh, to hear people who are fans of the same thing they're fans of talk about it to help them get more excited. So you have to serve us better. You have to serve the fans better by giving us more to get excited about. Does that make sense? Impact wrestling. Does that make sense? Is, 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 is this thing on? Is, is this thing on? Does that make sense? All right. All right. So uh, enough about that. On a slightly more positive note, uh, Impact Wrestling did announce that Hard to Kill is going to take place in Dallas um, at the, is it the Bomb Factory? Let me look it up. It's going to... Uh, at the factory. I'm sorry. The factory in Dallas, Texas. Now, I believe... This was the same venue that they had the uh, Tessa Blanchard hard to kill at. Am I correct? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, yeah, and and listen, they had a pretty good crowd for that. They had a pretty good crowd for that. And again, like we're going back 
right before the pandemic hit, I remember seeing the crowd they had there and thinking it was a nice, lively sounding crowd and thinking to myself, man, Impact is on the right track. They're on the right track. These venues are slowly getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, I remember being in the, oh God, what was that? The Melrose Ballroom for Bound for Glory in 2018. And they they oversold the venue. It was shoulder to shoulder. It was tight in there. Dudes was musty. And I'm not small. Okay. So I was not, I was like, yo, I will never, ever, ever do this again. But so to see them doing bigger and bigger venues, I was really happy to see that. And I was like, okay, this is great, man. Impact, you know, Impact is, is they're, they're, they're leveling up slowly but surely. So um, I'm very interested to see, you know, how well they fill out this venue. You know what I mean? Um, how well they put together a card and how lively and active they can make the fans be. Like to me, I think this is a great opportunity to gauge where Impact is right now. They were in Skyway Studios for a very long time. Once they got fans back, uh, they were there throughout the whole pandemic. Then, you know, once they got fan back, they had, once they got fans back, they still stayed at Skyway Studios for a number of months. Now they're doing tapings in Vegas right now. And, you know, the crowds are okay. The crowds are okay. Um, but I want to see, man. I want to see, man. I want to see you guys get back out there in front of some, you know, some, some, some real wrestling crowds. You know what I mean? I want to see you go to Philly, go to Chicago, go to Dallas, go to Atlanta. You know what I mean? Go to places where people love wrestling and let's, you know what I mean? Let's, let's see how people really out there really feel about impact wrestling. So I'm, I'm excited for, um, for hard to kill to be at the uh, factory in Dallas, Texas, because I feel like it's going to be a great gauge for where the company is right now. What do you think? First of all, I'm trying to think what the bomb factory is. I feel like that's something hip hop related in New York. And maybe, maybe, I, <laughs> maybe. I feel like that's what it is, like a like a studio or something like that. One of those like legendary studios. I don't know, but so Hard to Kill was my favorite pay per view this year. I know it wasn't. You know, we're talking about a couple of years ago with the, the Tessa Blanchard one. What I remember in particular was that the tickets were not selling for that show, and I think at the mm-hmm. last minute they were able to get, to move the seats, move the tickets. But Hard to Kill is usually a show that's pretty good. Um, they they really, I, I'm not looking forward to the end of 2021 because Impact phones it in big time, mm-hmm. uh, for December and part of November. Like we're probably gonna get the turkey suit thing. And then, you know, there's the best of award show stuff, which I've, I've, I've never watched. I I view that as a vacation. Uh, I don't have any interest in that stuff. So um, uh, speaking of no interest, I tried to watch BTI this week and I was like, I'm I'm not doing this again. Um, I, you know, I wanted to watch the Rachel Ellering match with a, uh, I don't even know if it was from this week or the previous one, but it was, it was Rachel Ellering versus uh Savannah, uh, Evans. Savannah Evans and I I was like are they trying to put on the most boring match possible like I was bored to tears watching I shut it off in the middle dude I was like I can't watch this yeah I, I think that's tough hold your thought wherever, wherever, wherever you're going there but I, I think that's tough because they're both you know I hate using insider turns but they're both like relatively green you know what I mean like yeah. Ra- Rachel Ellering I don't think she's um she's not like uh she's she's not like, 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 for example, you know, let's say wrestling is like a dance, right? You know what I mean? And you got to have a good dance partner in order to get, you know, the best product. Um, if anybody saw, we're recording this on Friday night, and SmackDown tonight led off with a, uh, uh, like, an eight-way woman's match or a six-way woman's match. Um, and on one team was um, Shayna Baszler. Uh, who else was it? Natalia and... Who's the last person? Uh, uh, it doesn't matter. But the uh, but the other team was Naomi and Sasha Banks. And, oh, Sashi Shashi Blackheart, Shashi Blackheart. Um, so all you know, c- kind of veteran Shashi, still new-ish, but she's you know got a lot of experience. <clears throat> then the other side was Naomi, Sasha Banks, and Aaliyah. Now, if you guys know anything about Aaliyah, Aaliyah has been in WWE developmental for. For like 20 ever. years, yeah. He's been there through like every iteration of NXT. And like now they finally said, shit or get off the pot. Like 
they moved her up to SmackDown and, you know, it's, it's sink or swim time. And so, <clears throat> so what they did tonight, this was her first match on SmackDown and she still is super, super green. Like, I mean, like, it, it, like how have you been in developmental for seven years and you still can barely wrestle? Like, it's wild to me, but whatever. Anyway, like Titus O'Neil, if you put Titus O'Neil in the ring today, he might kill somebody. It's crazy. Like the, <laughs> the like, some people like it just doesn't click. So anyway, they put they had a great match, a great match. It was a, a six woman match, and it was phenomenal. And the way they did it, they made Aaliyah the star. They made Aaliyah the star of the match, and it was funny. It was little things like there was a part where um, Sasha Banks tagged her in, right? And they did something where Sasha picked her up like she was going to give her an atomic drop, but like put her on to, I think, Natalia to do like a Hurricane Rana. And like, so you look, so you look at like um, <clears throat> vets, you surround them with vets with, you know what I mean? With high quality, you know, super good vets and they can make anybody look good. So Rachel Ellering versus Savannah Evans is like the opposite of that. You know what I mean? Like, like Rachel Ellering, I think has potential to be really good. If she she has, she still needs a lot more work though. Like I don't think she's in position to be leading somebody who's still learning. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like like I I don't you know like you know, she I, she's not there yet. Like she still need. I think Rachel Ellering is in a position where she can do good matches if she has a really good partner. You know what I mean? Like you put Rachel Ellering with like Jordan Grace. I bet you they can put together some good matches. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Uh, they won't be like they won't be like 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 Diana Perrazzo and Mickey James, you know what I mean? But Rachel Ellering with somebody who's really good can do a good match. Yeah. So oh, you yeah. put Rachel Ellering with somebody who's still learning, and I haven't seen the match, but just from yeah. what you described, I, I I'd be willing to bet what I just said is an accurate description of. Yeah, it was I, just a little rough, and I love Rachel Ellering. It it was just it was just rough, you know. But uh, we we, we kind of got off topic, but just <laughs> talking about. Uh, the factory and hard to kill. I was thinking about trying to go to bound for glory to Vegas. And I, I, I decided I, I had gone a couple months over my, my spending budget. You know, I was trying to say, Hey, don't want to spend more than this in a month. And when you go a couple months in a row, you're like, I'm a little over, you got to pull back and, and you don't go into October. Be like, okay, now I'm also going to travel to a paper, you know? So I decided right. to pull back on it. So yeah. uh, maybe Dallas is a lot closer to me than Vegas. So I, I might consider, trying to go that one um but i think it's it, i think it's gonna be it proved to be a good venue for it like at the time we we're like oh dude this looks like a nightmare because the tickets weren't selling but uh and we thought maybe it was a backlash of the Tessa, Tessa blanchard you know everyone knew she was gonna win the title so i don't know I, i'm looking forward to hard to kill because uh with the point i was making is they really phoned it in at the end of the year mm -hmm. uh, and television viewership is down across the board the final yeah. quarter you know so i mean they they know it um yeah Usually they go into the new new year like boom let's let's right. really hit them you know, um, that's the time I always think that you, I'm not saying this because of the we own the night but I think I always think the top of the year is like okay let's get a new song let's get it some, little bit of a new presentation update the website I've I've said that since one of my first podcasts when they, uh, debuted on Pop TV and everything was exactly yeah. the same I was like dude how do you not go into a new new year a new era with <laughs> without something you know, to get excited about, but looking forward to hard to kill. Uh, I would imagine that's where we're going to get Josh Alexander and Moose. So they're, they're doing a good job of like, uh, I think we worry that Josh and Moose were going to fight right away. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That, like now mm -hmm. they're at least giving Moose a little bit of a title run. So Right, right, right. So I like it. I like it. Um, Real quick, we're about to get into this week's episode of Impact Wrestling. But before we do that, everybody take a quick little pause and go ahead and hit that like button. Okay, hit that like button, hit that thumbs up so that everybody knows how much you like this video. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that you are subscribed to the channel and you get all the content. And go ahead and hit that bell so that you get a notification each and every time <coughs> we drop some new content on this channel. All right, now. Without further ado, this week's episode of Impact Wrestling, let's get into it. So we started off with bah, 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 bah. Bullet, the Bullet Club, Chris Bay and El Fantasmo with Hikuleo 
versus Finn Juice. And this was a number one contenders match for the Impact World Tag Team Championship. Okay. Um, Juice Robinson hit Chris Bay with a power slam, followed by a squatting senton. Bay distracted the referee. Then a lot, that allowed Hikaleu to send Juice in to steal the steel guardrail. Phantasmo hit a springboard moonsault on Juice to continue the assault. Juice hits Phantasmo with a series of strikes to create separation and make the tag to Finley. The pace quickens as Finley hits a springboard crossbody to El Phantasmo on the floor. Finlay has Juice beat down on following a flying elbow, but Phantasmo breaks the pin. Finley turns his attention to Hikaleo, taking him out on the floor. Inside the ring, Phantasmo super kicks Juice, then holds off Finley while Bay scores the pinfall. So the Bullet Club become the number one contenders after the match. The, book, the good brothers head to the ring and they just jump right in and start having a brawl with the uh, with the new number one contenders, the Bullet Club, Hikuleo and uh, Doc Gallows had a face to face in the ring and they started you know going back and forth like boo yay boo yay so they started doing that and when they started doing this, I noticed something that I haven't noticed on Impact before, and that was the camera cuts with every single punch. That is a production style that is that WWE does all the time, and I hate it. Yeah. I hate it. It's the worst thing in television. Like, you don't, dude, when you're watching a boxing match, they don't switch camera angles with every punch. Right. Like, come on, man. Like, please don't forget. Like, please don't lose too much of the feeling of we're watching a sport. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Like, don't go too far into the cinema. It's good to add effect sometimes, but sometimes it's just too much. And stuff like this, to me, is a little too much. I totally agree with you. I've been saying this. Uh, I just tweeted about it before we went off on the air. I could tell with this match and throughout the episode, <clears throat> they introduced some new camera angles in the match, and, and, and I, was, I really liked them. It was, it was a little fresh, but they do cut really, really fast between moves. And I was just listening to an interview with EC3 yesterday. Uh, it was, it's a month or two old with Chris Van, Van Vliet, whatever his name is. I'm thinking of, that's Fred Van Vliet, right? Chris Van whatever. I don't remember exactly. So anyway, and he was yeah. talking about the sim- cinematic matches that he does. And he, he brought up, you know, wrestling loves to do this thing now where they just cut real fast between moves and it takes away from the story of the match. And I talked about watching NXT 2.0 and I noticed that when I was watching, they didn't do that. Uh, maybe, mm. you know, like you said, WWE television, SmackDown raw, they do that, but I didn't see that on NXT. Like they would deliver some punches that I was very used to a camera cutting to the next angle or whatever. And they were, they were just letting it happen. And I felt like as a viewer, I was, buying into it a little bit more like it let it lets it lets what's going on breathe a little bit and you emotionally right. connect it just a, to it just a little bit more but but when it's the it's the cuts and, and this and this it's it's no different than um i got a coffee or maybe you mute it for a second it's no different than on the commentary matt strikers like dealer what's a square root of pi matt the square root of pi is this you, you know where everything is is like whenever he has D'Lo a question, he never has to stop and think for a second. Like it's it's all it's rehearse, 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 rehearse. Right. And that's how the matches come out too. When you when you cut that quickly, you just not in you're not get buying into the story. It's it's like what you said. You're not you don't feel like you're watching a real sport. You're watching like it's almost like the cameras are like okay, we know what move is coming next. That's that's mm-hmm. just how I I take it. But yeah. Um. But I did enjoy some of the new angles, but all the cutting yet yeah, it, it's too much. Um. So I don't know. I feel like the last few weeks it wasn't that bad because I didn't notice it, but this particular episode I did. Yeah. Um, so I yeah, don't know. Yeah. Um, but the you know this match itself, I I it was a good match. I just didn't care. Like when I saw uh, the the you know oh next week number one contender, I was like Dude, again. <laughs> I mean, like is anybody the number one contender yet? <laughs> yeah. I was like, I, I feel like Finn Juice has only wrestled the bullet club for the last like 
10 episodes. I mean, that that's just what it, I know they haven't been around that long, but it that's just what it feels like. Like, it's just the same three teams. I don't even know if there's another tag team in Impact anymore. I don't have, a, I honest to God, don't have a clue. Good point. I have no idea. I, 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 I would be interested. Teams, who else is a tag team? Yeah, I, I there's Violent I can't, by I mean, Design, there's the Learning Tree, but like, does he hit squat? But but it, it, you don't feel like they're part of the tag team division because they're just right. doing other, you know. Exactly, exactly. All right, so Josh Alexander confronts exe- Impact executive by executive Vice President Scott Demore about why he's not in the Impact World Title Number One Contenders match tonight. Demore tells him that he must first settle his differences with Minoru Suzuki next week so that he can be razor focused on recapturing the Impact World Title. Uh, after being pinned by Sam Bill in a six-man tag match last week on BTI, Brian Myers challenges him to a singles contest next week to determine who the better man truly is. What do you think about this backstage stuff right here? So the backstage stuff this episode looked really good, very different, you know, different color lighting, different parts of the building. Obviously, this wasn't Skyway Studios, but I just thought they did an excellent job. Uh, I, I just want to address that because I know I... I hammer down on that their production value a lot but w- when it is good i want to i want to let you people know like i'm going to point out what's different and what's good and what i enjoyed you know like it's not fair for me to only be negative about the production value when it steps up i have to acknowledge that as well so right. i i really enjoyed the backstage segments they just all looked good they sounded good reminded me a little bit of old tna stuff like it was pretty good they're, they're doing a good job of you know, Josh should be questioning, why am I not in this match? You know, like right, that's right. good attention to detail. Scott Dumore was all over this episode. Uh, he's very annoying on screen. So I, I, I mean, I, I could just do with like a hundred percent less of them. Like, like no <laughs> kidding. The Brian Meyer stuff always gets a chuckle out of me. I always find yeah. it funny. The learning tree stuff. It's really weird. Like Sam Beal was in the perfect role for him. He was yeah. doing his role perfect and you could have told a very long if this is where you were going with it there could have been a really decent long-term story it's granted a lower card story but they could have done a pretty good long-term story to where the fans would really get behind Beal at one point you know on some DiBiase Virgil type st- stuff you know what I mean like <laughs> Virgil turning on Ted DiBiase one day one day was years in the making you know like granted it's a completely different era of wrestling but right, right. I mean dude like he they popped huge when that eventually happened, you know, and right. this was just weird to me. Like he, how much of it, he was the learning tree. You know what I mean? Like he was what made it the learning tree. Now you got Zicky Dice and then BSK who you already said is you're not really teaching him because he already knows everything or whatever, you know, my best student ever. Like it's not, it's not the same now without Manny mm-hmm. Lemons and without, uh, with, with, without Sam Beal. And now Sam Beal's like this, like white me baby face all of a sudden and stuff like that. <laughs> It just felt like super rushed, you know, like it was, it was something I was enjoying and all of a sudden they just, they just rushed it. I agree. I agree. I, right. No, I totally agree. I think that they could have dragged that out for longer with them being like assistants to Brian Myers, like helping him, you know, move up the ladder and get victories. And then you could have gone into like this story, but I feel like they peeled away from it way too soon and went into like flushing out the story. Like if you were to spend enough time letting people feel bad for Sam Bill for right. getting treated by Brian Myers, then people would be cheering for Sam Bill to get out from under his thumb. But you're right. They moved through that way too quickly. Yeah. That never happened because they, they, he never took anything out on Sam Bill to a little, to a small extent, but it was always at Zicky Dice and Manny Lemons, you know, like it wasn't Sam Bill was still in, in his good graces for the most part. Right. You know, so yeah, yeah. yeah just all weird. Yeah. Very weird. All right, so Caleb with a K uh, took on Minoru Suzuki. Suzuki is making his Impact Singles debut tonight. Josh Alexander is seen watching in the back on a monitor backstage. Suzuki quickly takes control as he begins to dismantle his opponent. Suzuki hits the gotch pile driver to score the dominant victory. Caleb with a K looked, you know, completely afraid throughout this entire match. And uh, like you said, this was a squash. Yeah, it was a waste of our time. Um, when you have... Suzuki wrestling John Moxley and these dudes on another station, and then you're like, "Hey, for his singles debut, he's he's gonna get a squash match with Caleb with a K." Like, uh, 
I mean, at least it wasn't his first match. They had the six the six man tag last week, but right. it's kind of a waste. And then they played it up like Josh Alexander was scouting this match, you know. And Josh, uh, even Scott's like, "Oh, he's going to be in action, so you can see what." Dude, like we know that how this match was going to play out. So, right. you know, what, how what many Josh... pile drivers will it take to beat Caleb with the K? Yeah, <laughs> another another pile driver finisher on Impact. So. <laughs> All right, Gian Miller asked Impact World Champion Moose if he's concerned about any of his next potential challengers, Matt Cardona, Eddie Edwards, and W. Morrissey. Moose calls himself the greatest champion in all of professional wrestling and says that whoever wins the number one contenders match is the one who should be concerned. All right, uh, next we had Decay taking on the Undead Bridesmaids. This was not good. Um <laughs> The Knockout World Tag Team Champions, the inspiration, enlisted the help of the Undead Bridesmaids to take care of Decay before their title shot at title showdown at Turning Point. Speaking of the inspiration, they make their way to the top of the ramp to scout out their opponents. Um, This was, you know, again, this was a a squash by Decay. I think that, um, I think that, you know, Kimberly and Brady Lauren are not doing any uh, justice to this undead bridesmaids character thing um like why do it if you're, you're supposed to have like the power of sue young or whatever oh, right, you know what right. I mean? like you should be better not worse you know you shouldn't be coming here getting squashed and after the match uh the inspiration got a promo saying that since you guys couldn't beat decay now we're gonna fight you next week and it's like um is that a threat like <laughs> the, the, the undead Yo. bridesmaids should be the new world tag team champions then I mean, yeah, like, you know, come on. All right, whatever. Heel, heel versus heel tag team match. You're right. It's not. They're not doing Su Young. They're doing her a disservice. Um, and Kimberly's good. I, I've always liked Kimberly in the ring, you know. But um, I think it, I think it was a, a part of a Twitter chat. I, I can't remember what conversation I was in where someone posted a picture of Brandy Loren. And it's like she's one of the hottest girls in the division, and they like, covering up her in makeup and everything. <laughs> it's just funny. But, but Sue uh, Young is too, though. Yeah, true, true. She's fine as hell. Yeah, <laughs> but she's also like clearly like amazingly super talented. You know, yeah, oh yeah, the very. She plays because you notice it with Undead's bridesmaids coming down, and they're trying to kind of be Sue Young, but it's like it. You really see how talented Sue is at being that character because they're. They're still trying to figure it out, you know, but like Sue, it's just like second nature with her and, and everything. But they, uh, they need her to come back very badly. Um, so, yeah. spoiler alert, Inspiration is probably going to be the tag team champions for the next like five years. So, no, no one's beating them anytime soon. I, I, I promise they're going to have these things forever. <laughs> In the words of uh, Kevin McAllister, Buzz, your girlfriend. Woof. (laughs) That's awful. Uh, All right. Rhino had a backstage interview with Heath where uh, he vowed to purge the poison from his body when he faces Violet by Design against him and Heath at Turning Point. Chris Saban, uh, he had a a backstage promo where he vowed to shut up Ace Austin because he challenged him to a match at Turning Point too. So we got two matches made at Turning Point, stuff to look forward to. Did uh, either of these situations catch your eye? Yeah, the, the Heath and Rhino's promo was pretty good. Uh, Rhino sounded a lot like the Ultimate Warrior, though. It's like the purge, purge the poison from the, you know, like oh, it's very almost nonsense, you know. But uh, but no, I, I enjoyed that. Um, Heath sounded pretty good in it. So, you know, we're going to get a guy who does a spear against one who does a pile driver, and we'll probably see those moves on turning point. 50 other times too. Uh, and then uh, Saban and, and uh, Ace, that should, that should be good. Um, I don't know. It should be a good wrestling match. Yeah, no, for sure. Well, Chris Saban, like, you know, you're going to get a banger ass wrestling match. Like, that's that's a given. Yeah. And Ace Austin, you know, again, Ace Austin, another guy. Um, you know, Ace Austin's in an interesting spot because, like, how many times can you heat and unheat somebody? You know what yeah, I mean? Right, right. Um, you know, like, I think a lot of us have looked at Ace Austin as like, oh, this guy's going to be like, you know, next up or whatever. And they just have not quite, you know, pulled the trigger on him. Now, there's stuff we don't know as, you know, wrestling fans. Like, you know, we don't know why, you know, it could just be because they have other people who they want to focus on at the moment. But 
you know, again, like, you know, how many times can you heat up somebody and cool them down before you just don't really care anymore? All right. All right. Um, we had Madison Rain versus Mercedes Martinez. And Mercedes hit an impressive delayed vertical suplex. Then Madison connected with a backstabber to gain control. Mercedes came back with a modified Tiger Driver for two. Madison soared off the top rope, hitting a blockbuster for a near fall of her own. Then Mercedes countered with a rip cord cutter into a roll up for three. Mercedes Martinez got the victory here. Uh, Madison attacked Mercedes after the bell, then laid her out with a rip cord cutter. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> then Nutter. Madison further uh, Madison did further damage with a steel chair until Knockouts World Champion Mickey James came out to make the stage. Then Mercedes pulled the freaky double cross and dropped Mickey with a modified driver to stand tall. What do you think about this here? So I thought the the match itself was good. I thought it was better than I expected. Um, right when they re- said this match was going to happen, I was like, okay, so five time knockouts champion is going to lose her fifth match in a row, and that's exactly <laughs> what happened. Uh, you can't take away her five time knockouts championship. No, that right? you can't take away, but she doesn't beat anybody. Um, so the match was better than I thought it was. I liked the finish because, you know, it wasn't. Mercedes hitting her finisher on Madison Rain or some BS roll up like this. What the way though they did the roll up was like she was legitimately pinning her down, yeah, and, and she just couldn't move, you know. So it, it yeah. kind of protected Madison a little bit. Uh, so so I, I so I thought that was good. She she definitely fared a lot better than Caleb with a K. Um, <laughs> I, I hate I hate their theme song with passion. So I, I was disappointed having to hear that twice in an episode, but. Um, <laughs> But yeah, no, it, it was cool. The uh, after the match, so Matt Stryker's commentary this episode was horrible, and especially in the main event, ho oh, fucking horrendous. And and what I mean is, I know I always go on my commentary rents every episode. He was going through the motions this entire show. Like, mm. I I was the last week I was watching the show, and I asked myself, I was like, who's the play by play guy? Because Matt's calling moves, and then D'Lo starts calling moves. Mm, they walk all over. Like they don't have a very clear, you know what I mean. Yeah. But this particular episode, I was like, dude, if D'Lo didn't do it, Matt wasn't going to. Like there was times where where Matt started like <laughs> rambling about, it, and like there was stuff going on in the ring, important stuff, and he's just talking. And D'Lo would have to intervene and be like, hey, you know this and this. And this. Like it was crazy, dude. So after this match. <laughs> When uh, Mercedes Martinez hit that move, like D'Lo was like, oh my God, you know, like he, he, he gave an actual reaction right? where Matt was like in the middle of a sentence and he just completed the sentence with no, <laughs> you know, his voice did not fluctuate, <laughs> nothing. He just, it, one of his like real, like in the, oh, I don't even know how to work. The, the shit he says, like, very, like, poetic, the, the, the stuff he does. Like, the, he was in the middle of something, dude. And he just continued talking. Like, I was just like, dude, are you not reacting to what you see? Like, that's how I felt this whole episode. Even my fiance was like, I, I'm watching the episode, and she's, like, in the bathroom next to me, flossing her teeth or doing some shit. And she's just listening to the commentary. She's just like, oh, my God. You know, like, they, they said something, and she's like, Thank you. I figured that out for myself. But what she meant was like they were doing a bunch of like real Captain Obvious type of yeah shit they were saying, dude. But, but like Stryker was just phoning it in this episode, man. And mm. um, Dilo, who I'm usually pretty hard on, he he kind of saved the commentary this episode. I was just I didn't even notice that. I didn't even notice that. But yeah, you, you know, well, yeah, I, I've I, noticed that his commentary it, has not been great. No, yeah, it really hasn't. But but gotta it's better Dilo than Josh Matthews. Let's let's just keep it real. It's better yeah. than Josh Matthews. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Does any even tiny part of you want Josh Matthews back? No. I, I don't mind him every once in a while doing an episode because he, you know, it, it's fresh. It's whatever. And him and D'Lo are actually better together than Stryker and D'Lo are. But hmm. uh, I just want them to get the Ring of Honor guy. He is excellent. Um, and then, of mm. course, Beta Scott's really good, too. But the Ring of Honor guy's good. Yeah. You know, he paints a real great picture of what you see. So, um, Stryker used to be, he was perfect on Lucha Underground. I was like, dude, this guy. 
I remember uh, Josh Matthews used to say, oh, they offered me the Lucha Underground job first, but I chose Impact. I'm like, they offered you the job over Matt Stryker? Like, Lucha Underground would have not been as cool if Josh was doing that show. I, <laughs> I can tell you that much. Like, like Stryker was so good. And I was telling my old lady, I said, dude, I think Stryker just at the point of his, his career, he's just, I've just done everything I, I wanted. I, no, 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 no. I, I, I see where you're going with this. And listen, it's the same thing how you see people coming out that might have had abs on another show and got love handles now. Okay. Yeah. Like it, it's impact, man. Like impact, you got to put the pressure on your talent to be their best. You know what I mean? Like if you create an atmosphere where people feel comfortable going through the motions, they will go through the damn motions. Like there's a small percentage of the population that is truly self-motivated to do their best at everything all the time. But if you leave people an out to be mediocre and get by with no repercussions, that's what you're going to get. And that's what we, the fans get ultimately. So yeah, there it is. All right. Steve Macklin notes that despite coming up short in recent weeks, he still has never been pinned or submitted. X division champion Trey Miguel confronts him and says that if he wants another opportunity to get the title, all he has to do is ask Scott Demore interrupts these two because he's ever president. Okay. He's, ubiquitous <laughs> uh, 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 he interrupts and announces a match between steve macklin and laredo kid for next week if macklin wins he'll be added to the x division title match between trey and laredo at turning point why does every x division match have to be a triple it have to be multi for, yeah why it doesn't do anything for anybody you're just putting on an exhibition at that point like the storytelling and getting involved in, in, in emotionally connected to it, it's it's out the window. Like now you're just it's just a rest it's just wrestling. Just call it the, the Hella Person Flippy Championship. Yeah. It's I want to see Laredo Kid versus Trey Miguel. Like that's it. Why he's the I, I, I that's all I want to see. There's no reason to add Macklin to this match. None whatsoever. He didn't win the number one contenders match. It doesn't matter if he hasn't been pinned. And I love this dude. I got his damn shirt on. He doesn't need to be part of the match. And he's a, he's already saying uh, he's basically told us, you know, I've lost matches, but I'm never the one who gets pinned. So you should want a one-on-one -on -one match. You shouldn't want a triple threat match because history right. says you're not going to win it. But Trey, dude, Trey is, oh my God, he's a different person getting him away from the rascals. Like would he, yeah. he was so good. I forgot what he said. He had a line, man, that I was just like, bravo. I, I can't remember what it is off, off the top of my head. There was something though that he said to him. I was like, that was freaking great. But I really liked it. But just triple, th I mean, come on. The, the roster, even though the roster is growing, it's a lot bigger than it's been in a while. They they are bringing in new people. At the same time, like, it's not big enough for everything to be multi-man matches. I understand you're trying to get as many people on the show as possible. I totally understand that. But um, that's why, you know, you see with AEW, they form a lot of stables and partnerships. They find ways to get people on TV without having them be like, hey, there's 50 people wrestling in this match. Right. You know, like, let us just enjoy a match at a time, a feud at a time. You know, it's, it's just always, let's muddy it up. Let's muddy it up. You right. know, people wait their turn. Like, why is that so difficult? Because the people who are booking this show, for whatever reason, they seem to think that making, you know, every X Division match a multi-man match is what makes it unique. But I think what makes it unique is, again, let it be the balls to the wall title. You know what I mean? Like, let that be how you describe the X Division. You know, let, let, let it be the, if you're going to put one, one match on a show where you're doing the NXT TakeOver ROH style, where it's like, you know, a thousand kickouts and false finishes, like, you make that the X Division, you know? Like, and, and I don't know, at least that will give them some sort of unique characteristics to work with but you keep trying to blur the lines of what is or isn't the X division. And it just makes me not care. Okay. Yeah. That's what it does. It makes me not care. All right. Let's see. Sam bill tells rich Swan and Willie Mack that he needs to go it alone against Brian Myers. We already covered that. Uh, we had Rohit Raju uh, versus Rocky Romero. And this was actually pretty good. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I tell us the situation where Rocky Romero definitely has respect for Rohit. And, you know, he wanted to have a good match with him and, and uh, you know, kind of put him over. 
Um, so Ro Rocky took control in the early goings of the match by launching himself off the steps and colliding with Rohit on the floor. Rohit distracted a referee, allowing Raj, Raj Singh, to attack Rocky from the outside. Rocky built up speed and momentum with a series of running strikes. Then Rocky hit a tornado DDT for two. Rohit came back with a flatliner for a near fall. Then Rocky locked in an arm bar, but Raj got up on the apron. Rocky takes him out of the equation with a dive to the floor. Then Rohit hit the drive-by knee to score the victory. So Rohit Raju got the victory over Rocky Romero. I like this. I like this a lot. This is a yeah. good wrestling match. And I like to see, uh, you know, I like to see Rohit get wins because this is a dude where if you just stop and pay attention, you can tell how hard he works. And you can mm -hmm. tell how dedicated he is to the Impact brand. And as a fan, you should absolutely love somebody who is about that life because not a lot of people are. Yeah, dude, he, he has come such a long way since, you know, he first showed up. Uh, just his physique and, and the promos are always, I mean, they've always been a strong point for him. Uh, they didn't let him talk for a long time, but he, he just sounds great. He looks great. He wrestles great. You know, like he, he's, he's one of the dudes for this company. And um, uh, I, I just, uh, I didn't expect him to win this match. I was very shocked that he did. Uh, yeah, but it was it was a good win for him. Uh, Rocky is, is very interesting because he debuted in the call your shot. They toss him like a piece of trash pretty quickly. Uh, then he gets a one on one match for X Division title, loses right away, and then he wrestles again and loses again. I'm like, dude, this guy hasn't won anything in Impact, yeah, so that's really weird. He had a <clears throat> when I was at a Rampage, <clears throat> excuse me, and they were showing the match graphics and the. Brian Danielson versus Rocky Romero for next week popped up and people were like, Oh, you could hear a collective. Right. Oh shit. You know, mm -hmm. like people were, Holy crap, you know? And then of course, but he goes to AEW and loses there too. I'm like, dude, this guy, we've seen him wrestle on TV now for about, you know, three, four matches and he doesn't beat anybody. But, um, but it was well, a good it's, match. It's, so AEW is different though. Hey, so here goes the tangent. AEW is different. I've been saying this for years, like ever since, I first started hearing about All Out, okay? And I was trying to ask my man, Satch. I was like, yo, what's the big deal? I don't get it. He's like, it's the super indies and all these guys and all this stuff. And it's like, no, listen, that that niche group of, of fans that is just like super cult of Dave, Dave Meltzer, you know, all things ROH, all things New Japan, that the American, uh, the, the, <laughs> ROH and New Japan got together and had a baby and it was AEW, the AEW fan. And that's what it is, right? So these people care so much about the people who are in New Japan and all that stuff. And a lot of people, you know, whether many people want to admit it or not, a lot of people don't know anything about these New Japan people. So, you know, when Rocky Romero or, you know, Jimmy Jacobs or somebody, you know, walks out on the Impact show and people are like, yeah, there's a guy. You know what I mean? Like, there's everybody doesn't know these people. They're not as big a stars as people in that cult think they are. But all the people in that cult go to AEW shows. So when they go on AEW TV, they feel like big stars. Yeah. It's a mind trick. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, all right. So Hernandez tells Johnny Swinger that he got them a match against the Demon and Decay next week. Teaming with Hernandez and Swinger will be one of Swinger's Palace's best customers. Follow Ba. All right. Um, let's so the see. K's doing comedy matches now. Yes. Um, w. Morrissey versus Matt Cardona versus Eddie Edwards in an Impact World Championship number one contenders match. Whoever is victorious in this star-studded three-way clash will challenge Moose for the Impact World title at Turning Point. Speaking of the champ. He's watching this match from the press box high above the impact zone in Las Vegas. Uh, Morrissey is in complete control following a double choke slam to both his opponents. Cardona attempts a running crossbody, but Morrissey catches him in midair and follows up with a fall away slam. Eddie spears Cardona off the apron to the floor. After being beat down by Morrissey, Eddie fights out of a delayed vertical suplex, but gets shut down with a big boot. Cardona and Eddie team up against the big man as Cardona hits a code breaker followed by the blue thunder bomb from Eddie. Cardona takes everyone out with two with a huge tower of doom out of the corner. Eddie jumps off the apron and hits the Boston knee party on Morrissey. 
Back in the ring, Eddie hits another Boston knee party on Cardona for the win. So Eddie Edwards defeats Matt Cardona and W. Morrissey to become the number one contender. Eddie Edwards celebrates as Impact goes off the air. What do you think about this? This was this was actually a, a good main event. I like the Boston knee party, but it's very similar to Rohit's move that he just won with the previous match. Uh, you know, I'm always going to point that stuff out. <laughs> um, but but he but uh but I do like the Boston knee party. Uh, I don't like D'Lo going. It's the knee party. Like, dude, call it the right name. Anyway, I I enjoy I enjoy the match, and I didn't know who was going to win. I honestly God didn't. Um, Moose had said he was going to give Morrissey the first crack, and that's not what happened. He is a number one contenders match instead. So it's been a while since Eddie has challenged for the title. I mean, I know he was the champion at Slammiversary last year. That's when he won it, right? Yeah, because then he lost. Yeah, he hasn't been. It feels like he was just the champion, but it's been a while. Because hmm. he because he won it at Slammiversary, and he didn't even make it to Bound for Glory. So. It, he hasn't yeah. been the champion for over a year. Okay. Um, this is a well they like to go back to a lot, the Eddie versus Moose thing. So I can't say I'm like super excited, but it's it's a little bit fresh. It's fresh for a, right. a world title match. But um, Eddie looked good. You know, Stryker is clearly trying to get the people at home. It, it's kind of like what you were pointing at earlier. Hey, when you come to Impact Show, sing this song. <laughs> You know, they've seen what it's done for Jericho and some of these dudes, uh, Jungle Boy, you know, people singing the song. So they're, they're trying to get that a little bit, which is fine, which is which is good. They should do that for Eddie. But, uh, you know, the, the match was good. I, again, I didn't know who was going to win. And it's a good job of, of dragging it out a little bit so Moose gets some wins under his belt, some legitimate wins. Because if he drops the title hard to kill, I think it's too soon to drop the title yeah, for Moose. Totally but, I mean... But you also can't have Josh Alexander like chasing for the long, you know, like it's weird. I'm curious to see how they're going to handle that whole feud and dynamic when it eventually happens. But but I enjoy the main event. It was it was a good uh good way to end the show. Yeah, I, you know, I disagree with the point that you can't have Josh Alexander chasing forever. I think Josh Alexander can and should chase for a long time because that's what the that that's what the fun is. The fun it, for the baby face is in the chase. He should chase Moose and lose and chase Moose some more and lose and then fight back and maybe on the last time he gets the victory and now he's the champion. Yeah, it, it was a nice touch with Moose, by the way, from the, the way who's watching the match. You know, it wasn't the same. He didn't come out and like the inspiration and just pull up a chair. You know what I mean? Right. He, <laughs> he, you know, I'm the big dog here. I'm not going to sit amongst the, the people. So that, that was a nice touch. But no, you're right. Uh we brought up Sami Zayn earlier, and he was chasing Neville for a long time, Aaron, Aaron right. Neville at the time, you know, and he kept losing, and he, people knew he was going to win when he did, but you you tuned in because you wanted to see him win. Like, it wasn't like, oh, it was a predictable right. match, like when Tessa Blanchard won, you're just like, okay. <laughs> uh, you know, so, yeah, I guess you could you could do it. I just don't see them doing that. I just, I really feel like they're, they're big. Josh, they're going to act like Josh has been chasing for the longest time, but it's like he's just right. going to win the title right away. That's that's my guess. But they're doing a good job of, uh, you know, Christian Cage used to keep saying, don't let your emotions get the best of you, Josh. I'm like, Josh Alexander is a robot. Like, what <laughs> one point has he ever showed an emotion on television? <sighs> and now they're like, they're doing a good job of tapping into that and, and creating an emotional character so that yeah. he's not just a dude who wrestles good matches. Like, they're just they're doing a good job with him. Right. I mean, one of the important things about storytelling is you have to create stakes for the main character. So by having, you know, by bringing in Josh's family and all that other stuff, now you've, you've created a situation where you totally understand why he has like a bloodthirst for Moose on top yeah. of the world title. Yeah. Very, very good job with it. All right. So we're done with this week's episode of Impact. Guys, I know, I know, I know. Trust me, we are going to get back to the questions. Me and BQ are going to knock out an entire episode where we're just going through your questions. So drop your questions and comments right below the video on the YouTube channel. We are going to hurry up and get up out of here. Did you have any final thoughts, BQ? Nope. Uh, you know, good episode. Lots lots of small improvements. Uh, just got to do better about promoting it in, in an engaging way that people want to watch the episode. Um, but But overall, good show. 
hopefully the, the you know the viewership's up next week. That's right. That's right. BQ, tell the people where they can find you. BQ speaks on Twitter, Impact Lounge on Twitter, Impact Lounge on Instagram, and even the Impact Lounge on Facebook. All right. And uh, as usual, you can find me at TW Talking About on your social media choice. You can follow my podcast page at Talking About Pod. Uh, like I said, it, you know, like this video, share this video, give it to a friend, whether it's, whether it's a podcast or a YouTube clip or SoundCloud link, whatever there is, share it with a friend, you know, tell them how smart we are, tell them how stupid we are, whatever you want to tell them, just bring more people into the conversation. Um, until next time for BQ, I'm TW. Peace.